I met Tao in April 2007 at a yoga workshop for Integral Yoga. It was a master workshop. Tao came up to me and said, I want to know you. The way she told the story, I was in the perfect handstand, probably better than I can do it now. And, and she just, we connected. It was love at first sight. It was an energetic connection. After that, I started to go to workshops and incorporate Tao in some of the empowerment programs I was doing. At one point, I said, can I interview you? I, I got a sense there was something a little bit more than the yoga teaching. And so I interviewed her. I invited my mother and sister to her home. And we learned about her marching with Mahatma Gandhi and being in the French resistance and a model for Chanel and under contract with MGM, all these different things. And my mother being a Columbia University trained journalist, she looked at me say, to almost say like, do you know who this woman is? She is historical. And, and so that interview was one of the first that really put Tao in a broader context. It wasn't just this older yoga teacher, you know, and she can do all these things. It was, wow, who's this woman? I was invited to do a program for the Newark Peace Education Summit that was hosted by the Dalai Lama. I said to the organizers, well, I think you should invite this woman, Tao Portion Lynch, to be on the opening panel with the Dalai Lama. It was a big ass. And they listened. They put her on the opening panel with His Holiness, with Dr. Deepak Chopra, with all these notables. And she was the buzz of the three-day event. People like Donna Karen, who I had met through the yoga world, so she came up to me and wanted to meet Tao. And my workshop, ironically, was called The Gandhi Effect, about transformation. You transform yourself and the world around you. And since Tao had marched with Mahatma Gandhi, I invited her as a special guest. It was already standing room only before people knew she was there. And then when they found out Tao was going to be speaking, people couldn't get in. They turned away Donna Karen, I think, because they didn't realize who she was and they already closed the door. That launched us beginning to do work together. I had already been featured on the cover of Yoga Journal and knew the Yoga Journal people because I'd moderated a number of the panels at different conferences. I was chair of the board of Yoga Alliance. And so I introduced Tao to the Yoga Journal people and she did her first Yoga Journal conference. I moderated with her. It was this broadening of her context, of positioning her in these places where she really needed to be. November 5th, 2011, I know it because that's my mother's birthday. I had hosted an event at the Dwyer Cultural Center in Harlem. It was the Tao's very first program that she did in Harlem. And my mother and my sister, my family, they, they were there, my nephew. And Tao pulled my mother and me aside and asked us to work with her. She said, will you collaborate with me on my life story? And, and what was interesting is that she asked both of us. It wasn't, you know, just me or just my mother. She said, I want both of you. It was very astute. And later I asked her why. She said, you get me between the two of us. My mother knew the historical context of many different things, like when Tao would talk about Marlena Dietrich. My mother actually had her own stories about Marlena Dietrich when she managed an art gallery on Park Avenue when she was just out of college. So she had those stories. And then when Tao talked about EKS Iyengar, I was like, Mom, do you know who he is? So I had the yoga piece of it together, the three of us, three women from three generations coming together to tell the story of this one amazing woman. That was the project. When a yoga master asks you to work with her, the only answer really is yes. I put aside other projects, so did my mother, so we could really focus with Tao. She was already in her 90s. There was a sense of urgency. Let's capture her story. It took four years of interviewing to actually write the book. And I'm glad we took the time because it's authentic. It's her voice. It turned from being a biography in our voice to being an autobiography 
which was in Tao's voice. And that meant a lot to her and to us to represent her life in the right way. She was very pleased with our working relationship. So that evolved into the Tao Brand Legacy Project, which encompassed other elements. We created the Conversation with a Master event because we knew books are low margin. You don't make a lot unless you're a celebrity and it takes a while for a hardcover book. We wanted a vehicle where she can earn right away and so we created Conversation with a Master which raised her appearance fees and she loved doing the event. We had slideshow on her life in the background as I was moderating. She just simply loved it. She's like, are we going to do that again? We also outlined digital courses as well as some other elements. It was really about how do we establish and amplify the brand of Tao and establish her legacy so when she's no longer here, people can learn from her wisdom for generations to come. We are so, so very, very honored that she trusted us with this project. Now that she's no longer here, we really feel the importance of the Tao Brand Legacy Project to be able to have, again, generations for years to come practice with her teachings and to learn about her life and hopefully be inspired to craft this fearless Tao-like life.